Hello everybody, it's developer relations Stefan from Contentful. Good to see you back. I hope you built something nice with the example application I showed you in one of the last episodes. In this episode, I want to tell you a secret. Today, the times that we're shipping for a single country are over. Products we build today are shipping globally, all over the world. So we always have to think of different languages. And this is why I want to tell you today how localization in Contentful works. And to show you how it works, I built a quick example application. So let's head over to my computer here. What you see here is a simple website that is built with Material Design Lite. It has a language switch on top and then fetches data from Contentful depending on the language you select. Unfortunately, it's broken right now, because I haven't set up the second language, German in this case, yet. When I now inspect the network panel, it's clear that the API has no clue what to do with the DE locale. So let's have a look at the underlying code to see how it works and how we can improve it. So what you see here is the main index.html file. Here we have the language switch, including the two radio inputs. And then there is an empty container in which the content entries stored in Contentful will be appended to. The Contentful JavaScript SDK gets loaded at the end of the file and I'm doing the whole magic in an inline script to not increase the complexity of this example. So what do we have here? The JavaScript SDK client is initialized with a given space ID and an access token. And the two important containers are selected from the DOM. In case you wonder why the dollar prefix is there, that's just from my old jQuery days, where I like to work with this prefix convention. Then there are three functions. Setup event handlers has the task to attach the event handler to the checkbox container to be notified whenever the language switch changes its state. And whenever this happens, update UI is called. Looking at update UI, you see that the default is currently US English. This function then fetches the certain entry from Contentful. It uses the get entries function from the SDK client. You might wonder why I'm using get entries and not get entry. This has one main reason, and this is a Contentful Pro tip. When you're dealing with references included in an entry, you won't get the complete link or reference resolution when you call getEntry. The magic is only applied to the collection call. So, I made it already a personal habit to always use getEntries. If you're only using one locale, you can also omit this property as the API then returns the default locale. Get entries returns a promise then, which will be resolved with a response object. This response object then includes a number of items. I know that this entry is available and that the item's length is 1, so I can just grab the first one and hand it over to the next function, render entry. Render entry is then replacing inner HTML of the entry container. I'm using a template literal as a templating engine here. So you see that the title, description and publish date of the entry are dynamically rendered. There is not much magic here. So let's put everything together by heading over to the Contentful web interface. So, here we see the post that is rendered in the website and to set up a new locale, I will go to Settings and Locales. Currently, the default locale is US English. Let's add a new one. Cool, so let's add German as a second locale. And we want to fall back to English. So I set the fallback option here to, well, English. And this little notice here tells us that we should check allow empty fields for this locale. Because it might be that a content model includes required fields which aren't present in another language. This would trigger a validation error. So let's hit save and go back to the overview. Sweet! Now we have a new language available. So what's next? Next step is to enable localization for the fields I want to translate. So let's go to the content model editor and do just that. So here's the content type and it has three fields. Now I can click settings and enable it. You see here that it now will become translatable from English to German. At the end I have to save the complete content type and I'm done. Cool and now I can go to the entry and can start translating. So here you see on the right side this translation section. It might be that I'm not interested in translating entries or only want to deal with one language, so I can configure the user interface here. In this case, I want to translate the entries from English to German. 
So I hit change and add German to be displayed in the interface. Nice. Now you see that the interface changed and every field now has two input elements. So let's start by translating the title. Thankfully, I'm fluent in German. On the road again becomes Wieder auf der Straße. Hit save. And let's see if this already works. As you see, I can now switch the languages inside of the website. And you see something else too. The description falls back to English and is not causing any errors. Great. So let's finish the translation. I'll quickly translate the description with Dies ist ein Artikel über mich und wie ich mit meinem Fahrrad die Welt bereiste. And now, well, I don't think I have to translate the published date. So let's go back to the content model editor and disable the functionality for this field. I think this is really cool, because by disabling translation for certain fields, the UI stays uncluttered. And dates, or for example images, might not need to be translated at all. So let's disable the localization for the publish date again and hit save. Cool. So let's have a look at the final result. Nice. Works perfectly. And this is localization and contentful. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you have any feedback, please let me know. Have a good one and happy translating.